5 Facts About Fallen Angels That Many People Do Not Know Number 1. They Were Not Originally Created Evil As a result of Satan's guidance, certain angels sinned and left the place where they should have been. These fallen angels' transgression consisted in rebelling against the Lord and His edicts, which is the definition of sin. The Word of God says in Jude 6, Amplified Bible, The angels who did not keep their own designated place of power, but abandoned their proper dwelling place, these he has kept in eternal chains under the thick gloom of utter darkness for the judgment of the great day. One of the reasons Jude's letter is so well known is that it's known for bringing up hidden topics, and this is one of them. Jude writes about fallen angels who have been locked up in preparation for the day when they will be judged for their transgressions. It's not too much to say that the New Testament nowhere else presents so many strange phenomenons, or raises so many curious questions within so narrow a space. Angels who did not keep their proper domain There is some measure of controversy about the identity of these particular angels. There are two key places in the Bible that make reference to angels engaging in sinful behavior. Isaiah 14, 12-14, Amplified Bible How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, light-bringer, son of the dawn! You have been cut down to the ground. You have weakened the nations, king of Babylon. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mound of assembly in the remote parts of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Revelations 12.4 And his tail swept across the sky and dragged away a third of the stars of the heaven and flung them to the earth. And the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she gave birth, she might devour her child. We read, He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. God judges these wicked angels, setting them in everlasting chains. Their sinful pursuit of freedom only leads to bondage. In the same way, those who insist on the freedom to do whatever they want are like these angels, bound with everlasting chains. True freedom comes from obedience. If angels cannot break the chain sin brought upon them, we are foolish to think that humans can break them. This gives us lessons. First, it assures us that certain men causing trouble will be judged, no matter their spiritual status. If God judges the angels who sinned, He will judge these certain men. Secondly, it warns us, that we also must continue walking with Jesus. Every good and holy influence surrounded them. They saw God and abode in His courts, and they conversed with seraphim and cherubim. Their daily activities were all of a sacred order. Worship and service were their responsibility and joy. They were not only in paradise, but also in the very dwelling place of the Almighty God Himself. Yet evil found its way into the very hearts of angels, including envy, ambition, pride, and rebellion. And as a result, they fell, fell to earth, never to rise again. This should serve as a lesson for us, not to make any assumptions about anything having to do with our position down here below. You could grow up to be the man of Belial despite having been raised by godly parents who took great care of you as a child and who continue to do so as an adult. Even if you never visit a place known for immorality and your travels consist only of going to and from the house of God, it is still possible for you to be a bond slave of evil. The beings whom we now call evil angels were part of God's original creation of spirit beings. 
Though they were originally created as sinless, holy beings, these angels chose to rebel against God. They left their actual habitation, the reason for which they were created. When they chose to do this and sin against God, it was at that point they became evil angels, and they were not created as evil beings. Number 2. Power of Choice The evil angels, like the good ones, were all given the ability to choose or make moral decisions. You and I are far from perfect. We are not fallen angels. We are not angels at all. But we have evil hearts within us. Therefore, let us not presume for an instant that the most privileged position can screen us from the worst of sin. Angels are beings of incredible power. We know that they have exceptional intelligence and beauty. Number 3. Flagrant Sin By committing flagrant sins against God and rebelling against Him, they demonstrate their wickedness. After the final judgment of God, the following words will be spoken. Let the evildoer still do evil, the filthy still be filthy, the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. Revelation 22.11, Amplified Bible Let the one who does wrong still do wrong, and the one who is filthy, vile, impure, still be filthy. And the one who is righteous, just, upright, still be righteous. And the one who is holy, still be holy. These angels will remain forever evil. Lucifer and all the angels were constantly in God's presence and were aware of God's glory. As a result, they had no reason to rebel against God and turn away from Him. They were not enticed. Despite knowing what they were doing was evil, Lucifer and all the other angels rebelled against God. Number 4. No Salvation for Them Scripture teaches that God has provided salvation for fallen humanity. 1 Timothy 2.4 Who wishes all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge and recognition of the divine truth. Yet there is no salvation for these fallen angels. Paul wrote, Colossians 1.20 And through the intervention of the Son to reconcile all things to himself, making peace with believers through the blood of his cross, through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Number 5. They will bow. Though they will never be saved, there will come a day when the evil angels will bow before the Lord. Philippians 2, 9, 11. Amplified Bible For this reason also, because he obeyed and so completely humbled himself, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in submission of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess and openly acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, sovereign God, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. We read, Therefore God has also highly exalted him. This is the general heading for the material in the next three verses. These words describe how God has exalted Jesus. Indeed, highly exalted could also be translated super-exalted. Now just pause over this thought that Christ did not crown himself, but that his Father crowned him, that he did not elevate himself to the throne of majesty, but that his Father lifted him there, and placed him on his throne, Spurgeon. We read, Give him a name which is above every name. This verse, with its clear statement of Jesus' deity, is strong ammunition against those who deny Jesus Christ. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth, and of those under the earth, 
and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. That, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Jesus wins in the end. Paul does not imply by this a universal salvation, but means that every personal being will ultimately confess Christ's lordship, either with joyful faith or with resentment and despair. Kent. Those in heaven, and of those on earth, and of those under the earth. This demonstrates that the absolute entirety of creation acknowledges Jesus Christ as being superior to everything else. In this, Paul draws on the idea of Isaiah 45.23. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. Notice that Isaiah, it is you, Yahweh, that all knees bow and tongues confess. In Philippians, it is to Jesus, showing that Jesus is Yahweh. Those under the earth, either the dead who are hid in the earth and shall be raised by the power of Christ, or devils and wicked souls. Every knee should bow, every tongue should confess. The combination of tongues confessing and knees bowing gives evidence that the idea is a complete submission to Jesus, both in word and in action, and one that is required of all. It is also important that we do not overlook the fact that at a later point in the history of the Roman Empire, all citizens of the empire were required to take an oath of allegiance to the emperor, stating that Caesar is lord and offering a pinch of incense to an image of the emperor. Though the Roman state saw this only as a display of political allegiance, Christians rightly interpreted it as idolatry and refused to participate, often paying with their lives. Paul makes it clear that even the knees of those under the earth will bow to Christ. Whoever believes that they are immune to temptation is already caught in the trap that is set for them. We must never presume. Angels have been known to fall, so why shouldn't men? An angel occupies a high position near the throne of God. Are they not all ministering spirits? We have evidence in Scripture that they are called on grand occasions to discharge high commissions for the King of Kings. And yet these courtiers, these household messengers of the palace of heaven, these domestics of glory, even these went astray and fell and turned to devils. No one should ever delude themselves into thinking that just because they have a position of authority within the church fall to pride. The arrows sent by the prince of darkness are capable of penetrating even those at envied positions. The most prominent position in the field of service are not risk-free. In fact, the higher up you go, the more dangerous the position you hold, because of your prominence. The forces of evil make their most determined assault on the most steadfast soldiers of the cross with the hope of toppling the standard bearers and sowing discord across the camp. The angels who sinned were originally given the power to choose. When God created the angels, they were sinless, holy beings. Though they were created good, they used their choice to rebel against God. In doing so, these perfect beings abandoned the purpose for which they were created. The fallen angels become the evil angels of the Bible, bringing spiritual and moral ruin to the world. They will bear the consequences of their sin for all eternity. Those angels who rebelled were clearly not God's elect angels. Finally, there is no reason to believe that angels would repent if God gave them the opportunity. 1 Peter 5.8 Be sober, well-balanced, and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely, hungry, seeking someone to devour. The fallen angels seem completely dedicated to standing against God and God's people. The word of God says that the severity of God's judgment varies according to how much knowledge a person possesses. 
Luke 12, 48 But the one who did not know it and did things worthy of a beating will receive only a few lashes. From everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required, and to whom they entrusted much, of him they will ask all the more. The fallen angels, with their vast knowledge, are thus richly deserving of God's wrath. The Holy Spirit strives with us, but never with fallen angels. The devils are left alone. God could have left us alone, because we have been given to idols, and yet he follows us with admonitions of mercy. There is no forgiveness, no hope, no heaven's gate for devils, but all of this exists for us. Please do not reject these precious gifts of almighty love. Let us turn to the Lord with all our hearts, knowing that he turns to us with such special favor. Their failure made a great gap in heaven. We go there to fill the space and to repair the breach which was made when they were tossed down from glory. Think about it. When you read, He took not up angels, but the seed of Abraham. Be taken aback and rush to Jesus and O saints.